This is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I will be demonstrating how to crochet the Huga Diamond Pillow. This is a free pattern that you'll find on mooglyblog.com, so please go to the link in the description where you'll find both right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as a link to the written pattern and all the supplies you need. To make this pattern, you'll need a USJ or six millimeter hook. This one happens to be by Furls. You'll also need two balls of Red Heart Huga Charm, seen here, and one ball of Red Heart Huga. You'll also need a 20 inch square pillow form or an 18 inch if you don't want it to be quite as puffy. It does make a 16 inch square pillow and I always like to overfill a fair bit, so I used a 20 inch square pillow here. Optionally, you'll also need a pom-pom maker, whichever one you like best, whatever format you like to use to make your pom-poms if you want to add those pom-poms onto the four corners, but those are totally optional. So let's go ahead and get started making our Huga Diamond Pillow. Okay, now before we actually get started crocheting, I want to take another quick look at the finished pillow here. Here you can see the diamond side where it gets its name, and this is the side where we use the Red Heart Huga Charm. It's got a little bit of sparkle. It's kind of hard to catch it on camera, but in person, it's really beautiful. Now, if we flip it over, it's actually reversible. You can see here on the other side is where we have used the Red Heart Huga. It's delightfully fuzzy, but not so fuzzy you can't see your stitches, so it's still an easy and relaxing crochet. So, now with that said, let's go ahead and make our Huga Diamond Pillow. Okay, now if we take a look at the two yarns we're using here, you'll notice that the Red Heart Huga Charm is a four, and the Red Heart Huga is a bulky, it's a five. So, what we're going to do is for the Huga Charm side, we're going to use two yarns held together. It's easiest, since we need two balls anyway, to just pull one end of each ball of yarn and hold those together. Then you'll just have a little bit left from each one, which you can use to make your pom-poms. For the huga, we'll just hold it singly. Two strands of four weight held together usually equals approximately, good enough for, you know, close enough for the, our purposes, that would equal one strand of bulky. So that's why, again, we need two balls of the Red Heart Huga Charm and one ball of the huga. So with our two ends held together here, let's see, there we go. I'm not gonna use the white on you, make it a little bit easier to see. We can go ahead and get starting uh, crocheting our diamond side. Now, for both sides, we're going to start with foundation single crochet, which eliminates the need to use a starting chain. And that is a little bit easier, particularly as in this case, when we're working with two strands held together because working back into that chain can get a little extra tricky in that case. Okay, now I do have a separate tutorial for foundation single crochet linked at the link in the description, but I'm just going to go ahead and do a few stitches of it here. For our little swatch today, I'll only be making 15 foundation single crochets, but to make the full size pillow, you'll need to make 55. For the stitch multiple, you can check the link in the description for the pattern. So let's go ahead and chain one. Again, I wanna make sure I'm grabbing both of these strands every time. I'm gonna chain again. And then I am going to go under the back hump of the first chain I made, the one furthest from the hook. So I'll just slide my hook very carefully under both of those strands. There we go. Go ahead and pull up a loop like so. This loop right here is going to count as the chain at the base of our first single crochet. So now I'll yarn over and pull a loop up as if we were just pulled up a loop from the chain. Then we yarn over and pull through two to finish our single crochet. So that's how you make the first one. For the ones after that, you go under the two loops now at the bottom. Remember that's going to be four strands of yarn for us because we're using two strands held together. Pull up a loop. That'll be the chain at the bottom of our next stitch here that we're working on. So we yarn over and pull up a loop to begin the single crochet. Then we yarn over and pull through two to finish it. So we're just going to keep making those. Again, if you're making the full size pillow, you'll need 55 of them. I'm just going to make a few more here. And then when we get to the end of row one, I'll rejoin you for row two. Okay, so at the end of row one, you should have a total of 55 foundation single crochets. If you don't like the foundation single crochet or you'd prefer not to use it, go ahead and chain 56, skip the chain closest to the hook, and just single crochet 55 across. As long as you've got 55 single crochets at the end of row one, that's the important part. To begin row two, 
We're going to turn, of course, and then we're going to start with a chainless starting double crochet. That gives me a really firm edge to work into when we join those two pieces for the pillow together. If you prefer though, again, you can use any double crochet substitute here that you prefer. So you could chain three or chain two and double crochet right in that first stitch, however you like to do it best however you like to get a double crochet in that first stitch. If you do wanna try the chainless starting double crochet, again, I have a link, uh, a tutorial linked at the link in the description, and I'll show it to you again real quick here. I'm going to pull up that loop on my hook up to about the height of a normal double crochet. Again, I am working with both strands here. I'll hold onto those with my finger, wrap them around the hook, go right into that first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, Pull it through that first loop and behind the one that was wrapped around the, the hook. Still got my finger on that loop. Yarn over and pull through those last two loops, like so. Then we're simply going to double crochet in each remaining stitch across. This first stitch already has a stitch in it, the chainless starting double crochet. So each remaining stitch gets its own double crochet. So just take your time. Make sure you don't drop any of those strands of yarn. Since we're working with two here, it takes a little bit more concentration and double crochet on across and so the end of row two should give you 55 double crochets so i will see you at the end of row two okay so after you've finished row two you should just have a simple row of double crochet there ready and waiting for row three so to begin row three we'll chain one and turn or turn and chain one however you like to do it then we're going to single crochet in the first three stitches so there's one then two, then three. There we go. And then we're going to begin the stitch that makes that, oops, just trying to pull up a little bit more yarn here. It's a little stiffer when you're pulling from two. There we go. Now we're going to make that stitch that makes that really beautiful diamond pattern. This is a front post treble two together. Sounds complicated, but if you've worked post stitches um, and treble stitches before, then and decreases, you can just put these together and I'll demonstrate it for you right now. So since it's a treble, we're going to yarn over twice. Then what we want to do is find the second stitch of the row below the previous row. Now I've written it out that way because it's repeats, but of course for us, that means dropping down to row one right now. So what we want to do is come down to row one and find that second stitch. So that'll be the second stitch of row one there. So we're just going to go right around that stitch, that single crochet, to begin our post stitch. So we pull up a loop, a front post stitch. So we pull up our loop as usual, carefully pull through two, remembering that there's two strands for each there. Yarn over, pull through two more loops. And then we've got two more loops left on the hook. What we want to do is yarn over twice again, then we're going to skip three of the stitches back there on that first row. So you hop down here, this is the stitch we worked around, so we're going to skip the next three. So that's one, I'm gonna try and pull it up here a little bit easier to see, one, two, and three. And then we're going to go around to the next one to finish that stitch. So dropping down to that first row again from the front, go around the stitch, pull up that loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then at this point, you should have three loops left on the hook. Since the yarn is doubled, it's actually six strands of yarn, but you can see here it's three loops. We're just going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops to finish that stitch. And that will count the top of that then, since it's all one stitch, is just one stitch. So when we're working post stitches, it's not uncommon, we're going to skip the stitch right behind it there because we've got a stitch made right here, so we don't want to increase. So then we'll go to the next stitch and that's where we begin our repeat again. We're going to work in the next three stitches with single crochets there. So three single crochets, one, two, three, and then we make our next front post treble crochet two together. So for this one, let me pull up some more yarn again here. Red Heart Huga Charm isn't specifically wound as a center pull, but I have found that this one works pretty darn well for center pulls. So if you like that, go ahead and feel free. All right, so here we are. We've got some yarn up. We're ready to begin that second front post treble two together. All right, so this time to begin, I'm going to yarn over twice. 
And I am going to begin with my first leg of my front post treble crochet two together around the same stitch as the second half of the first one we made there. So you can see right there is the second half of the first decrease that we made. It was worked around this stitch. So we want to go around this stitch again. To go around it again, if you haven't done that before, you'll basically be just going right underneath the loop that we worked before. So go ahead and put your hook right around that stitch, that same stitch. Pull up your loop. You can see I actually tend to drop my work and almost work sideways when I'm making post stitches like this. It helps me control my loops a little better. So you can try that too if you like. And I've got two loops left on the hook, so I know it's time to yarn over twice again. Skip more, th three more of those stitches down here. Let's see, one, two, three. Go around the next one. Pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then with three loops left on the hook, I can yarn over and pull through all three of those loops like so. So you can see we're starting the bottom half of our diamonds here. Then of course, skip the stitch right behind it, single crochet in the next three, and then we'll be ready to make another one. And again, we're going to just keep working around the same stitch as the previous one, skip three, and then the next one until we get to the end. So I've got my little swatch here. I'm almost to the end, but you'll keep repeating this on across for your 55. So I've got my three single crochets. It looks like I've got room for one more here. So let's go ahead and yarn over twice. We'll go around the same stitch as the second half of the previous one in the row below the previous row. Get that one started until we have two loops left on our hook, like so. Yarn over twice again. Skip three more, one, two, three. Front post treble around that one there. Work those off until you've got three loops left on the hook there. Three loops left on the hook, we yarn over and finish off our stitch. Then all we need to do is skip the stitch right behind that one and single crochet in our very last three stitches. So with one and two, and then three. Whatever you did here, whether it was a chain three or a chainless starting double crochet, that's what you'll be working into here for the last stitch, like so. And that is it for row three. Then we're ready to begin row four. Row four is going to be incredibly simple. It's exactly the same as row two. So we just chain, and however you like to make that first double crochet, we do that first, so chainless starting double crochet for me. Then we're just going to double crochet in each stitch across. And here we want to make sure that we're working back across. When we make those stitches, we work into the top of the post stitches and not the top of the stitch beneath. Remember, we make sure not to work in that stitch right behind the post stitch. We want to stay right on top of the previous row as we make our double crochets for row four. Okay, so at the end of row four, you should again have 55 stitches in your full size pillow cover. Um, we're not increasing or decreasing all in this pattern. We're just making really nice, solid squares. So then we're ready to begin row five. We're just going to be a lot like row three where we're going to be making our post stitches, but these are gonna be slightly offset so that we can finish those diamonds and set ourselves up for the next row. So after we've chained one, we'll single crochet in the first stitch. But now we're going to go ahead and begin those uh, post stitches. Now the first one, if we look right here, let's take a look at what we've got so far. You can see it's sort of like a, it's just pointing up right there. So to make that a diamond, we're going to have one all by itself, not a decrease, just a front front post treble up for front here. So we're yarn over twice. Then I am going to go ahead and front post treble crochet around the top of the front post treble crochet two together below this very first one right here. So when we work around this stitch, remember I talked about a little bit about how this is one stitch. It's got one little V there at the top. So we want to treat it as one stitch. So we don't want to go under just the first leg. We want to make sure to go under both legs with our hook. Then we can yarn over, pull up that loop. There we go. Yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and go ahead and yarn over and pull through two. This first one for row five is not a decrease. We're just making that one little line there for our diamonds. Then just as before, we'll skip the stitch behind the stitch just made and single crochet in the next three. So there's one and two and three. 
And then we're ready to make our first front post treble crochet two together for row five. Now what we're going to do is just as before, but instead of having to find the little stitches down here, we're going to keep working around the tops of these uh, decreases that we made in the row before the previous row. So after that first row of setting up the diamonds, after that it gets a lot easier. So we're just going to yarn over twice. Again, go under both legs there of that very first one, like so. Take your time and pull through that yarn. It's a lot of yarn here. We are working pretty stiff because we want a really nice solid pillow cover. Now we'll stop again when we've got two loops left on the hook. Yarn over twice. Jump all the way over here to this next front post treble crochet two together decrease. Work under both legs of that with your hook. Remember it's all one stitch. Pull up your loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And then finally yarn over and pull through three there to finish it like so and you can see now we've got that great diamond shape okay so after we've got that diamond shape again we just make sure to skip the stitch right behind it there and single crochet in the next three one two and three and one little trick to make sure you're not getting too offset the center of those that three should always be directly above the post stitch that you made two rows previous. Just a little visual clue. After you've made those three, we're ready for another decrease. And of course, you'll have quite a few more of these on your full-size pillowcase than I do here on my little swatch. But I will start with a yarn over, yarning over twice, going around the same as the previous one there. And work off those loops till I have just two left on my hook. I'll straighten out my yarn there a little bit. There we go. Yarn over twice again. And now, if you've been working along without me a little bit, you have come here to this final one. So we'll go around that one here and work our front post treble crochet two together. So we've got our three loops left. So we finish that one off. Skip the stitch behind it and single crochet in the next three. One. There we are. Let me pull up a little bit more yarn. You do run through this yarn pretty darn quickly. It makes a really gorgeous pillow cover. Let's see here. One, two, and three. There we go. And then we are going to finish it off. Do you remember at the beginning of row five, I talk a lot about symmetry in my patterns. We started with this one here all by itself. It wasn't a decrease, but we needed it to finish off that pattern. We're missing the same thing right here on the opposite side. So what we're going to go ahead and do, there should be two stitches left here. I want to point that out. Two stitches left in the previous row. At this point, we yarn over twice, go around that same post stitch there at the end that we finished up the last one on. And this time, just as before, we're just going to go ahead and work that on off. No decrease needed. Then we skip the stitch behind it, which would be that one right there, which leaves us just the one last stitch that we will single crochet into. If I can get it under the loops there. There we go. Oh, and a little hip bonus hair. Always got to have a hair in your crochet project, right? There we go. All right. So a finishing single crochet. Hold that up there. And you can see that is the end of row five. Now, after that, that is the pattern repeats. Rows six through 41, we just repeat rows two through five. So remember, rows two and four are just double crochet across from the wrong side of the fabric here. And rows three and five are our post stitch rows. But after, um, after you finish row three, all those post stitch rows are just worked around the ones below. So you'll have a decreases on row three, and then you'll have the two sitting by themselves plus decreases on every row five repeat. So if I pull up the finished pillow again, there we are, and turn it the right direction here. It's almost hard to see. Okay, I was working this way. I had to look really closely. So we can see how those stitches just build on each other row after row after row. Rows three and five, the only difference is you start with one and then you've got the one by itself versus starting with three single crochets and just doing decreases. So if you follow the written pattern and just if you need to go back and watch rows three and five again, you should be able to make the diamond side pretty easily. So then that just leaves our solid side. All right, so after you've finished your diamond side, you're going to want to make the solid side. This is using the Red Heart Huga, and this one is held singly. And this is just really simple, um, just basically a simple square. In order to make them match, when you make the first piece, I didn't quite finish it off here, I just finished off a couple more rows here so we can demo our assembly here in a minute. But when you've finished the diamond side, it should be a total of 41 rows, or until the piece uh, measures about 16 inches long so that you get a nice square. 
For the solid side, we're just going to start again with a foundation single crochet row of 55, followed by a row of double crochet. And then since we're not doing the diamonds on this side, it's just a row of single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single, double, etc. until again, you have 41 rows or about 16 inches square. After you have made both of your pieces, I do recommend blocking them both um, with water or steam, however you like to do it, to make sure that they are the same size. Even though you're working with the same hook and two strands of this equal about one strand of that, a little bit of blocking just to help them match up perfectly won't go amiss. Then you'll be ready for assembly. Okay, so when you've got both pieces made and blocked, you're ready to start joining them to assemble your pillow. Now, the huga side doesn't really have a wrong side or a right side, so whichever side you want to make the right side is up to you. On the diamond side, obviously, the side with the diamonds is the right side, so you wanna make sure your right sides are facing out, and then you can just sandwich them together. And what I like to do here, and I think this is really important, is take, sti take stitch markers, or however you like to um, do it, there are clips and other products, but I really like using stitch markers for this. And I will match up, for instance, this is the first stitch of this row here with the first stitch of this row. And then I'll count out a few and match up the next, you know, count out five or 10 or however many, match those up. Obviously I'm not counting them now, <laughs> but I just wanna make sure that I have these really well matched up so that as I make my seam all the way around, I don't accidentally um, end up skipping a stitch somewhere. This is even more important here along the sides. Obviously I didn't make these the same size, but you really wanna match these up as best you can and then use the stitch markers to help hold them together so that you don't end up uh, you know, moving too far along one but not the other, and then you might end up with one that's a little bit shorter than the other, and then you'd have to pull your stitches back out. Back out excuse me. So just take your stitch markers and take your time and really match those up all the way around the pillow, um, and then we'll be ready for our seaming. Okay, so after you've got your stitch markers on all the way around, we're going to take our Huga charm, again, held doubled, and we're just going to single crochet all the way around the pillow. So wherever you like to start, what you want to do, and I like to do this from the uh, Huga charm side, but you can do it from either side. Go through those two stitches that match. Doesn't have to be one at the corner if you don't want it to be. Any one is fine. With Go through both layers there. Then you can yarn over with your yarn, pull up a loop, and just go ahead and right away make your chain one, and then go right back in there for a single crochet, like so. And we're just going to continue doing that. Work in the next pair of stitches. Make sure you go through both layers and make a single crochet. Again, just make sure you're grabbing both of those strands of yarn every time. So we're going to basically just continue doing that, single crocheting all the way around the outside. Anytime we come to a corner, let me go ahead and move this out of the way here. Like when we get to this corner space right here, in this pair of stitches, you'll wanna go ahead and work three single crochets and that'll bring us around the corner really nicely. Um, now, obviously, at some point you need to insert your pillow form. So when you've got three sides seamed and maybe a little bit of that fourth seam, that's where I like to stop, stuff in that pillow, and then go ahead single crocheting all the way around until you've finished off, then you can join and break your ends and weave in your yarn. Okay, so after you've finished seaming up all the way around, all that's left to do is add the pom-poms if desired, and then you've got your two-sided Huga diamond pillow all set. Again, this yarn, this uh, pattern rather, featured red hard Huga charm and red hard Huga and a USJ hook. This one is by Furls. I hope you'll give this pattern a try as well as both of these lovely yarns. Again, the Huga charm has such a great sparkle. I just wish it showed up a little bit better on camera. Thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. If it helped you at all in making your own Huga diamond pillow, please do let me know. Don't forget to hit that like button. If you have more questions about this pattern, please let me know in the comments or hop on over to that link in the description and let me know over there. I always like to answer the comments and questions on the blog as well. So again, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And please don't forget to subscribe to the Moogly YouTube channel.